Lesson 7.3, Fraction and Whole Number Multiplication. We can find the product of a fraction and a whole number by multiplying the whole number by the numerator of the fraction. We write the product over the given denominator, then simplify if necessary. We have 3 times 2 fifth. We do 3 times 2 over the denominator 5. 3 times 2 is 6. We have 6 fifths. And we can rename this as a 5 fifths plus a 1 fifth. Same numerator and denominator. That's equal to 1 whole. We have 1 and 1 fifth. Here we have 2 times 5 sixths. We have 5 sixths 2 times. We multiply the whole number by the numerator. 2 times 5 is 10. We use the denominator 6. We have 10 sixths. That's equal to 6 6 plus 4 6. That's equal to 1 and 4 6. We can write it in simplest form by dividing the numerator and denominator by a common factor. We have 1 and 2 thirds. We multiply the numerator by the whole number because the numerator tells us how many parts to shade in for each whole. And the whole number tells us how many whole circles to use. It's 2 times 5, 6. We have 2 circles. When we multiply the number of shaded parts by the number of holes, we get the total number of shaded parts as the product. The denominator tells us the number of equal size parts that are in one whole, in all. And the numerator is the number of these equal sized parts we are counting. Here one whole is split into five equal parts. Our denominator is a five. We're counting two of them. It's two fifths. Two of the five equal parts are shaded. Six times two fifths is equal to six times two over the denominator five. We have six whole and we have two fifths shaded in each circle. Six times two is 12. We have 12 fifths. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 that are shaded. It's split into fifths. We have 12 fifths. And we can rename 12 fifths as a five fifths plus a five fifths plus a two fifths. Five plus five plus two is equal to 12. We have one whole, another one whole, and two fifths. We have two and two fifths. We have six groups of two fifths. It's equal to two and two fifths. Now here we're modeling one sixth times two, and here we're modeling two times one sixth. We have the same factors, they're just in a different order. When we model one sixth times two, it's finding one of six parts of a group of two. We're multiplying it by two whole. We have two whole models. We find six fraction parts that will evenly fit under the two whole. And one third pieces will fit. We have six one third pieces. We need one of them. The numerator tells us one. One of these six pieces is one third. Here, 2 times 1 6 is finding two groups of 1 6 parts. Both equations will have the same product. 1 6 times 2, we write the numerator. 1 times the whole number 2, we get 2. We slide across the denominator, we have 2 6. In simplest form, it's equal to 1 3rd. That's one of six parts of a group of 2. For 2 times 1 6, we use the whole number 2 times the one numerator up here, and we use the given denominator. We still get 2 6, which is equal to 1 3rd, and that's two groups of 1 6 parts. And the commutative property of multiplication states that we can multiply in any order and get the same product. So whether we're multiplying 1 times 2 or 2 times 1, we're still going to get the same product, 2, for our numerator. So they both have the same product, but they represent different things. Here we have 1 fourth times 10. 
We multiply the numerator times the whole number. 1 times 10 is 10. We slide the denominator over. We have 10 fourths, which is equal to a 4 fourths plus a 4 fourths plus a 2 fourths. That means we have 2 whole and 2 fourths. The 2 fourths, the numerator and denominator, can be divided by 2. For simplest form, we get 2 and 1 half. Here we have 6 times 2 ninths. We multiply the whole number 6 times the numerator 2. We get 12. We slide the denominator over. We have 12 ninths. That's equal to a 9 ninths as a 1 whole, plus a 3 ninths. That's 1 and 3 ninths. And in simplest form, we can divide the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor 3. We get 1 and 1 third. Here we have 3 eighths times 12. We multiply 3 times the whole number 12 for the numerator. We get 36. We slide over the given denominator. We have 36 eighths. We can think how many eighths fit into 36, or we can write them out as an 8 eighths as one whole, then another one, then another one, then another one. 8 times 4 is 32. That would leave 4 eighths left over. We have 4 whole and 4 eighths. That's 4 and 4 eighths. We can divide the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor for simplest form. That would be a 4. We get 4 and 1 half. And if you missed that lesson, it's linked in the description. It was video 6.1. Now let's try some higher order thinking skills. We can use reasoning to find an unknown digit. We're going to use n, a variable, to represent our unknown amount. We have n as a numerator, we have 5 as a denominator, and it says when multiplied by 3 whole, it's equal to 1 and 1 fifth. So we think 1 and 1 fifth as a fraction greater than 1, we do 1 times 5 is 5, we add the numerator 1, we get 6 fifths. If you don't understand how to do that, it's linked in the description video 6.9, where we learn to rename a mixed number as a fraction greater than 1. 1 and 1 fifth is equal to 6 fifths. So, n times 3 for the numerator needs to be equal to 6 over the 5 denominator. Some number times 3 is equal to 6, well that would be 2. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. n must be equal to 2. It must be 2 fifths times 3. That's equal to 1 and 1 fifth. For this one, we have some whole number n times 3 fourths is equal to 2 and 1 fourth. We take the 2 and 1 fourth and turn it into a fraction greater than 1, 2 times 4. The whole number times the denominator is 8, plus the numerator 1 is 9. It's equal to 9 fourths. That means n times some that some number n times 3 is equal to 9. Well, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. That means n must be equal to 3. 3 times 3 fourths is equal to 2 and 1 fourth. 2 and 1 fourth as 9 fourths. Here we have 2, and we don't know the denominator, times 5, a whole number, and it says it's equal to 2. And we think we have 2 equal to, it's 2 times 5 as the numerator over some number n. We don't know the denominator. Well, that would be 10 over some number n. And n must be equal to, to an amount that will make 10 over n be equal to 2. If we use a 5, 10 over 5, that's equal to 2. So n must be equal to 5. The denominator must be 5. Mrs. Kim wants to bake 12 batches of cookies. If each batch needs two-thirds cups of brown sugar, how many cups of brown sugar will she need? So we think she needs two-thirds 12 times, or 12 times two-thirds. We multiply 12 times two-thirds. We multiply the whole number 12 times the numerator. That's a 24. We slide the denominator across, and we have 24 thirds. And we can think 24 divided by 3 is equal to 8. 
That's eight cups. And remember to label the answer as cups or whatever the word problem is asking for. For fractions greater than one, we can think of it as a division problem. 24 divided by three. Emma wants to make four batches of her ice cream for dogs recipe. How much peanut butter will she need for four batches? So here's her recipe. You take two cups of plain or vanilla yogurt and two ripe bananas and one third cup of creamy peanut butter. You mash the bananas in a large bowl and blend in the peanut butter and yogurt. You pour into a freezer safe container, freeze it for one to two hours and it'll make about six servings of ice cream for dogs. Notice it says one third cup of creamy peanut butter. One batch needs one third cup, so we can find four times one third. We have four whole times one for our numerator, that's a four. We slide across the denominator, we have four thirds. That's a three thirds plus one third, that's one and one third cups of creamy peanut butter. Look who came to visit me just now. Hi, Miss Bonnie Bickles. So make sure to multiply the whole number by the numerator. The denominator just slides over. Four times one third, we multiply the four times one, and it's written over the denominator. We get four thirds, which is equal to one and one third. Usually my dogs are sleeping when I make my videos, but it's a very nice day and they're very perky today. Our next lesson is 7.4 and we're going to model multiplying a fraction by a fraction. Remember to hit that like button for me and have a wonderful day. Bye.